call the Prime Minister. Thanks, Mr Speaker. I inform the House that the Minister for Industry and Science will be absent from question time this week. The Minister for Climate Change and Energy will answer questions on his behalf. And I wish the Minister for Industry and Science a speedy recovery. Move to questions without notice. Are there any questions? And I give the call to the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Will the Prime Minister rule out changing the current tax treatment of the family home? Give the call to the Prime Minister. Order. Order. The House will come to order. The Prime Minister hasn't said a word. Remind all members. I remind all members about interjecting before a minister even begins speaking. The Prime Minister has the call. Thank, thank, the thank, thanks, Mr. To the Speaker. Treasurer as well. Uh, the Treasurer does make a point. <laughs> <laughs> we have just introduced very significant legislation before this Parliament to give every Australian a tax cut. <laughs> Every Australian taxpayer, whether they own their home or not, Order. all 13.6 million of them. Members on my left. And what and do they right talk about? They've had, they've had two weeks to think about their first question, and it has nothing to do with what we're doing, <laughs> and something to do Order. with something that no one will ever do. <laughs> they've had a fortnight Order. to think of it, Mr. Members Speaker. Members on my left. Because they've the been all over the shop, Mr. Speaker. Deacon will cease interjecting. When it became clear that we were going to have a position of supporting every taxpayer getting a tax cut, the the deputy leader of the opposition, because the leader went missing for a while, the deputy leader charged out there, and she said, "We will fight this legislation in the parliament." She went on, Mr Speaker. Order. She said we don't even know what it will look like. <laughs> she actually said that. Order. Prime There's Minister. no gap between the sentences. Order. Order. The Prime Minister will pause. The Minister for Climate Change and the Member for Page. The Member for McNamara is warned. I don't care if it's his birthday, but he is now warned. Order. The Leader of the Opposition on a point of order. Mr Speaker, my question was, <clears throat> will the Prime Minister rule out changing the current tax treatment of the family home? It was a very simple, Resume your straightforward... Seat. Resume your seat. Resume your seat. The, the, the Prime Minister, I listened carefully to his answer, actually answered that part of the question directly. Order. Resume your seat. Order. Order. Member... Members on my right, the member for Barker and the leader of the opposition will cease interjecting. The Prime Minister will just pause a moment. The, the leader of the opposition, the ministers on my right will cease interjecting, including the Minister for Home Affairs. It's only the first question. I'm just going to ask the... You got that right. I'm going to... Get the Prime Minister to return to the question. Mr. Speaker, yes, I've, I've, I've answered the question. Now I'm adding to it, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. <laughs> now Order. I'm adding. Giving a bit of colour and movement, Mr. Speaker. Order. Because Mr. last Page. night, last night I was there watching Nemesis, <laughs> watching all the coalition of hatred along there. <laughs> An hour Order. and a half. An hour and a half that explained for Gray. in three parts why they were such a hopeless, divided government full of hate of each other. All played out, Mr. Speaker. And I was reminded Order. that the leader of the opposition, Order. his big commitment to be made leader, was that he'd smile more. <laughs> was a smile. That was going to be like little Miss Sunshine, Mr. Speaker. There's going to be Order. like Little Miss Sunshine. Members on my right will cease the ejecting. Instead, he gave us Jack Nicholson in The Shining. <laughs> you know, smashing through the walls. Here's Order. Peter. Full of hatred, full of negativity, full of abuse. Come on. 
If you Order. were fair income, you'd vote against our measure and you'd commit to roll it back just like your deputy absolutely promised to. Yeah. Order. There's far too much noise. Order. Order. The member for Holt shall resume her seat. The member for Lyons on a point of order. Point of order, point of order Speaker. The Deputy Leader made a uh, very disorderly remark and asked that she withdraw it. In defence of the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, there was far too much noise for me to hear anything. But I remind all members I'll be watching very carefully any unparliamentary language and action will be taken. The call to the member for Holt. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. How will Labor's new tax cuts provide cost of living relief and support the aspiration of every Australian taxpayer? Order. Give the call to the Prime Minister. Thank you, and I thank the member for Holt for her question and for her advocacy of people in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. The legislation that's before this parliament will give a tax Order, cut. The Prime Minister will pause. The member for Deakin is interrupted three times during this answer. No one else is interrupting. He is now warned. Prime Minister has the call. Our legislation will give every taxpayer a tax cut, yeah. all 13.6 million of them. Yeah. And one of the great divides that we're seeing playing out in Australian politics at the moment is the concept of aspiration. Yeah. Those opposite think that, Order. think that only people to aspire— Order. Members on my left. Members you on have my to left. be someone who's you know, been to the right school, had all the right background, be all part of the elite, Order. that they're the only people who aspire. Now, in this nation, what I know as I go around is that every taxpayer in the, the electorate of Holt page. has aspirations. Yeah. Every single one. Every cleaner, every supermarket worker, even those who work at Woolworths, Mr Speaker, yeah. those 200,000 that this bloke wants to lose their job, Every single worker in this country aspires to a better life for themselves and for their families. And that's why in an electorate like Holt, people have come from all over the world for a better opportunity, for a better opportunity for their, for their kids, for the next generations. So we think that this is the right decision for the right time. It's not an easy decision, Mr Speaker, and we knew that there would be pushback. We knew that those opposite, those opposite in their heart of hearts, would object manager to this business. so strongly. Even though I'm not quite sure what their position is today Order. on this, we knew they would object to it. But we knew that it was the right thing to do. Order. I said at the National the Press Club, the member for, for the benefit of the leader Gibson. of the opposition, that's the little building down the road there. <laughs> Where I spoke before, before national Order. before the, for Barker, the last election, we'll cease I said that our core principles would be no one left behind and no one held back, and that's why we wanted to make sure that those battlers Number who weren't Casey. going to get a single dollar under the existing frame of the Morrison tax cuts got a tax cut, got a break, because that's not just good for them; it's good for the economy as well. But we also wanted to acknowledge that you can't say that there are cost of living pressures out there on middle Australia and then not be prepared to do everything that you can to do everything that you can to make a difference. We will make a difference, which is Order. why these the tax cuts should be supported. Call to the Honourable the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. My question is to the Prime Minister. Will the Prime Minister no, no, rule out any changes no to, to the current that. tax treatment of negative gearing? Order. The, the Prime Minister has the call and will be heard in silence. 
I, 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 Order. I, 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 thank, uh, I, I, I thank the deputy leader of the opposition for her question. But it was hard to see across there because there's this big elephant in this room. <laughs> it's in the form of the legislation that the Order. treasurer just introduced at 12 o'clock. At 12 o'clock. The, Legis the prime minister will return to the question. Legislation, legislation Order. that will assist every every taxpayer to get a tax cut. That is what we are focused on. And the leader of the opposition. Order. The Prime Minister will pause. He has had 30 seconds or so dealing with the preamble, and I did call him to order to the question. I was about to, he was about to answer something. I'm not sure what it was, but I will take order. Just, just the the Assistant Treasurer is warned. Leader, there was not a point of order. Well, Mr. Speaker, it was a very simple question. Can we get a straight answer from this resume man ever? Yeah. Can you resume your seat. Resume your seat. Just remind the leader of the opposition. He will get the call. He just needs to state the point of order, which was about relevance. Order. The Prime Minister has the call. I did the see a slight curling of the, the, the corner there. I thought it was going to come out, Mr Speaker, that smile we were promised. He asked about negative gearing. Order. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll quote negative gearing, what, uh, what his, uh, one of his teamers had to say about that. The member for Menzies, because those opposite like talking about each other, so why not add to it? <laughs> why not add to it for, for Nemesis, perhaps episode four, the Dutton years? <laughs> uh, Senator Maria Kovacic. Order. Order. We should not be afraid to consider tax changes, whether they be capping the num. This is Senator Kovacic. Order. The Prime Minister will pause. The the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, we've already had one point of order on relevance, so she'll need to state the point of order when I give her the call, and she has the call now. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek your ruling. Is the Prime Minister being relevant? Well, the Prime Minister was... That's not a, it's not a point of order. It's not a point of order. It's not a point of order. Yeah. It's first day back. Order. The, the order. Members on my right, the Minister for Climate Change and the Minister for Home Affairs want to hear from the Prime Minister, and I'm sh making sure that his answer is being relevant. I've resisted talking about negative gearing and the member opposite. But Senator, Senator Kovacic said this, we should not be afraid to consider tax changes, whether they be capping the number of properties that can be negatively geared. That was in her first speech. You know, where you go along and you think, what do you really believe in? There it is, just there, from September 2023. And then the member for Menzies had this to say about negative gearing, about negative gearing. Every lever must be on the table. I tell you what we're doing about housing. We're focusing on supply. That's what we're doing. Focusing on supply. And we had Order. We had a tax change in the budget. Order. We had members a tax on, change in members the budget on my left will to cease to rejecting. To encourage build to rent. That was the tax change that we had in the budget. I'm not sure if they noticed it, because they were just too busy opposing everything which is what they do. Except maybe I'm not quite sure what their position on these tax cuts are, because they're asking questions about everything but. Order. Give the call to the member for Hasluck. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. What does today's decision on interest rates by the Independent Reserve Bank mean for the economy? Call to the Treasurer. Well, thanks very much, Mr Speaker, and thank you to the wonderful member for Hasluck for her question. But more than that, thank you for championing the 84,000 taxpayers in the electorate of Hasluck, including the 84 per cent of them. 
which will get a, who will get a bigger tax cut Order. to help with the cost of living as a consequence of our changes. Now, I know the member for Hasluck's community has been especially sensitive to the interest rate rises which began before the last election. And I know that her community and communities Order. right around Australia will particularly welcome the decision by the Reserve Bank today to keep interest rates on hold. The Independent Reserve Bank kept interest rates on hold at 4.35 per cent today, Mr Speaker. This is a decision which will be welcomed right around the country. This will come as welcome relief for Australians who are already under the pump, Mr Speaker. And as the Reserve Bank said in its statement released a few minutes ago, uh, there are encouraging signs in our economy. Inflation is moderating, but they recognise, as we do, that inflation is still too high in our economy. And that's why this decision and the inflation figures that we saw last week they do show that we're making welcome and encouraging progress in this fight against inflation and that our policies are helping to get inflation down, working in concert with the Reserve Bank. But it's not mission accomplished, Mr Speaker. Order. We know that because people are still under pressure. Headline inflation is now at its lowest level in two years, and monthly inflation has the three in front of it for the first time since December 2021. And the ABS has once again shown that our cost of living plan is helping to directly reduce inflation. They say, the ABS says, our cost of living policies took half a percentage point off inflation through the year to the December quarter. Member These were the cost of living policies that those opposite voted against when they voted for higher inflation in our economy, Mr Speaker. Whether it's electricity prices or rents or cheaper early childhood education, our policies are taking some of the edge off these pressures. Now, Mr Speaker, we are realistic about the challenges facing our economy, persistent but moderating inflation, higher rates and global uncertainty, but we, we face them from a position of genuine economic strength. We know inflation is still our defining economic challenge, but we are making encouraging progress. 650,000 jobs created on our watch under this Prime Minister, a record for a first term. The budget is in much better nick with the first surplus in 15 years and another in prospect. Real wages have grown for two consecutive quarters. Mr Speaker, and from the 1st of July, every taxpayer in this country will receive a tax cut to help with the cost of living. Under this Albanese government, Order. more people are working, they are earning more, and because of our tax cuts, they will keep the more of, the of what they earn. This will help them service the mortgage, provide for their loved ones and get ahead. Call to the Honourable Member for Warringah. To the Treasurer. Last year, the government voted against my amendments to the Support for Small Business Bill, extending the instant asset write off and small business energy incentive from 30 June 2024 to 30 June 2025. Given the financial year is fast coming to an end and the measures have not yet come into effect, will the government now commit to extending them for another year or were the measures just window dressing? Call to the Treasurer. Oh, of course they weren't, Mr Speaker, but in relation to the rest of the member for Warringah's question, you know, we are enthusiastic supporters of the small business people and communities of this country. And that's why the measure, and that's why the measure in the member's own question goes Order. to the kind of support that the wonderful Order. Minister for Small Business and our whole cabinet and our whole party who are enthusiastic supporters of small business. The measure that the honourable me uh, member mentioned in her question has been an important way that we are supporting the small businesses Order. of this country, but not the only way, Mr Speaker. We are also supporting the small businesses of this country with their cyber challenges. We are also supporting the local communities which keep small businesses in operation by providing a tax cut for every Australian taxpayer, which will find its way into the shops and small businesses order, of your community Treasurer and all of the... will pause the member for Ringer on a point of order. Relevance, Mr Speaker. It's simply a question of will they now extend it or not. It's not about everything else. The question did contain that in there, but it was some other information. I'm just going to ask the Treasurer to return to the question to make sure it's directly relevant to the member's question. Yep. No dramas, Mr Speaker. And as I was getting to, uh, Mr Speaker, when it comes to small business, we will always do what we can. Uh, we're not going to release uh, in uh, the beginning of February the May budget. Uh, the, member, the Minister for Small Business and all of the colleagues on this side are always looking for ways to support small business. 
uh, whether it's the things that uh, the member for Warringah is proposing in good faith or whether it is other measures, we'll always try and do what we can to support small businesses but also the communities uh, which rely on uh, a thriving, competitive, dynamic, innovative small business sector. Order. Give a call to the honourable member for Spence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. How is the Albanese Labor government delivering a tax cut for every Australian taxpayer to help middle Australia with the cost of living and what approaches were rejected? Give the, the Treasurer will pause and the Deputy Leader of the Opposition will withdraw that comment. Mr Speaker, I withdraw. Give the call to the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you to the member for Spence. He's asked more questions of me today than the Shadow Treasurer has asked me in more than six months, <laughs> Mr Speaker. And the member for Spence is an absolute champion for every single one Order. of the 74,000 taxpayers in his electorate which will get a tax cut from the 1st of July, including the 91 per cent of taxpayers in Spence who will get a bigger tax cut to help them deal with the cost of living pressures that they confront. And I congratulate the member for Spence for being a champion of the working people of his community. And I was proud to introduce the legislation today, Mr Speaker, because our legislation means a tax cut for every taxpayer and a bigger tax cut for more workers to help with the cost of living. Our tax cuts are better for middle Australia, better Order, for women and young people, better for teachers and truckies and nurses, and better for police officers and better for the economy, Mr Speaker. This is all about relief and reform, more relief for middle Australia and a better reform for our economy, a better way to return bracket creep, better for labour supply and work incentives, better for women, better for young people, no extra pressure on the budget, Mr Speaker, and no additional pressure on inflation, which is moderating in welcome ways in our economy. Now, Mr Speaker, we didn't take this decision lightly to change our position on stage three. We knew it would be contentious and we knew it would be contested. And I want to pay tribute here to the Prime Minister of our country for the way that he leads our cabinet and the way that he leads our country and most importantly for the way that he delivers for middle Australia, Mr Speaker, for the way that he puts people before politics, an approach which is absolutely foreign to those opposite, Mr Speaker. Order. Now, this is all about giving people help with the cost of living, and the opposition don't like our changes because they would prefer wages to be lower and inflation to be higher, and they want tax cuts to be skewed to the highest incomes. Their position has been indefensible, unintelligible, incoherent and unsustainable, and we saw that again, Mr Speaker. Now, let me give you two examples Order. of the approach we're rejecting. Order. The, the, the shadow treasurer on the Hume. same day called my changes Marxism. By the <laughs> afternoon, he was on 2GB saying he might vote for them. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the opposition leader called for an election on a policy that he is now voting for. That would be a pretty strange election, Mr Speaker, and a pretty strange debate. Imagine how angry he would get Order. if this was about something he's voting against, <laughs> Mr Speaker. The only clarity we get is from the member for Farrah. She was asked, will they roll back our changes? And she said, and I quote, that is absolutely our position. Yeah. No matter what they say today, they are still out of touch. They still want to roll it back and they still have no alternatives. Yeah. Order. Members on my right, there's far too much, no there's far too much noise. You can do it, Angus. The Minister for Climate Change and the Minister for Home Affairs. There will be silence so I can hear from the member for Hume. He will not be interrupted. If anyone interrupts him, they will not remain in the House of Representatives. Thank member for Hume has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. Will the Treasurer Order. rule out any changes to the current tax treatment of negative gearing? The Minister for the, no, the Minister for Home Affairs is warned. Order. The, the, treasurer, the treasurer will cease interjecting. The, the member for Page. No one is to interrupt before a minister speaks. I don't know why that's so hard for anyone to understand. Get it. 
Treasurer has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Saturday was a really important day. Uh, Saturday was the sixth month anniversary of the last time the member for Hume asked me a question. Uh, and, now that he, and now that he has asked the question, Mr. Speaker, we all know why. And I say to the Tactics Committee on that side, it's probably not the worst call to deny him a question for more than six months. And that's because the Prime Minister, myself in press conferences, we have dealt with this question already. And we know what this is all about. We know Order. what this is all about. The position that they have taken on Order. the tax cuts which are before the parliament is so incoherent and so unintelligible and so incomprehensible that they can't ask about the tax cuts which are before the parliament as order. of noon today. Treasurer will pause the manager on a point of order. Well, Mr Speaker, we're asking for a straight answer to a very clear question. Will he rule out changes of tax treatment of negative gearing? He needs to give a clear and simple answer, a straight point on relevance, or he should sit down. I think we'll deal with this matter now. I can appreciate when questions are asked, people would like a yes, no answer, as has been in the order the Treasurer will, will, just, sit, will, will just resume his seat. The Treasurer will resume his seat. So as we begin this week and this parliamentary term, this parliamentary session, I can't make a minister answer a question yes or no. I want to make that clear to everyone. I can make sure they are directly relevant under the standing orders. And I'll remind all members, if you wish to change the standing orders, that is up to the House to decide that. But as they stand now, you may not like the answer, you may not agree with the answer, but I simply can't ask a minister or a prime minister to answer a question yes or no as you would like. The Treasurer touched on his answer in terms of his previous statements, so he's being relevant. Order. And he has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It beggars belief uh, that the guy who hasn't asked me a question in more than six months is chirping at me about relevance. What would you know about relevance? Order. What would the member for Hume know Order. about relevance, Mr. Speaker? I say this once again. I say this once again for those opposite. I've dealt with this question publicly in the recent past. Order. And the point that I make once again, the point that Order. I make once again, Mr. Speaker, is it's almost three o'clock on the day that we introduced Order. legislation to give a bigger tax cut for more workers to help with the cost of living. They still haven't asked us a question at 10 to 3 about the legislation that I introduced at noon today. And we all know what's going on here, Mr Speaker. They want to ask us a question about all of the things that we haven't said we're doing because they can't defend their position on the thing that we have said we're doing. Give the call to the member for Parramatta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Employment and Workplace Relations. After a decade of low wages growth, how is the Albanese Labor government helping Australians earn more and keep more of what they earn? Order. Order. Give the call to the Minister for Employment, Workplace Relations, and Minister for the Arts. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member for Parramatta for the question. There are, there are 90,000 taxpayers in his electorate, and he's supporting a tax cut the for every single one order. of them. Every the single one of them. The Minister will pause. The member for Bowman will leave the chamber under 94A. Order. Order. ...to a government that has been determined to get wages moving. At every measure, every measure that we've had to get wages moving, those opposite have opposed. They've opposed them right from the start when, during the election campaign, the, the, the Prime Minister was asked the question, would he support a wage rise being backed at the Fair Work Commission? And he had a one-word answer that will be very familiar to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Absolutely. Absolutely to support those wage rises. The same word that was used from those opposite to say that they would oppose a tax cut for every Australian and that they would roll it back. Those opposite ask, Order. how's it going for the wage rises for these workers? Well, let's start with some workers who the, the Leader of the Opposition will be familiar with. Let's start with workers at Woolworths. 
He'll know about Woolworths workers because he called for a boycott that, if successful, if any Australian had followed his advice, would have meant fewer jobs for those workers. But not only did he oppose their jobs and oppose their pay rise, he was opposing their tax cut. Well, those checkout operators who irritated so much the Leader of the Opposition, in the life of this government, they are now earning an extra $95 a week. And thanks to the action this government has taken, not only do they now earn $95 extra a week, they are now up for a tax cut of an additional $920 a year. Earn more, keep more of what they earn. And for those of who say, oh, maybe they support the tax cut. If you support it, why are you so angry about it? Look, it's pretty keen and it's there for Order all the, the public to see. The Minister will pause. The member for Deakin has been continuing interjecting in this answer, and as he's on a warning, he will leave under 94A. The Minister in continuation. Thanks, Speaker. It's pretty clear and on display for all of Australia to see that from the moment this was announced, those opposite were angry about it. From the moment this was announced, those opposite didn't want it to happen. From the moment it was announced, those opposite had one simple principle. They did not want a tax cut for every Australian. And those pay rises have gone across the board, Order. across the board, average weekly earnings, so not just including award employees, up $68 per week, average weekly earnings under this government, an average full-time earner, a tax cut of more than $2,000 a year. More jobs, better wages, keep more of what you earn. To call to the Manager of Opposition Business. My question is to the Prime Minister. Will the Prime Minister honour his promise to deliver treaty and truth-telling? Call to the Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I thank the, uh, the under-challenged member for Bradfield and Shadow Minister uh, for uh, his question that actually Order. is about the Uluru Statement from the Heart. The Uluru Statement from the Heart. On a day Order. whilst it is, these issues are very important, uh, it is quite extraordinary that they're now going to go past three o'clock without asking a question about a $107 billion package yes. that we have before this parliament. $107 Order. billion. Dollars. Looking for anything else? Anything else to talk Order. about? Order. The Leader of the Opposition will pause and cease interjecting. The Prime Minister will return to the question. Now, Mr Speaker, we uh, put the referendum uh, to the Australian people uh, for a constitutional recognition of First Nations people through the method that they asked for in the Uluru Statement from the Heart after a five-year consultation process leading up to 2017, that was, that was at order. There is far too many interjections. The House is now on a general warning. I don't know who made that interjection. I just ask all members to show some restraint and respect. The call to the Prime Minister. That was, Mr Speaker, because we listened <coughs> to what Indigenous Australians, not told to this government, told to the former government in 2017, who were listened to by the former Minister for Indigenous Affairs, uh, Ken White. A man of honour and a man of integrity and someone who uh, stood up uh, for uh, his beliefs. Uh, both sides, of course, went to uh, election after election, uh, committing uh, to advance uh, that cause. That cause. The referendum was put to the Australian people. It was not successful, and I respect that outcome. That outcome. Uh, I got asked a range of times uh, about uh, about treaty before. Uh, 
Seriously, mate. Order. The Prime Minister will pause. Order. Order. The Prime Minister was mentioning the word treaty, which was in the question, so I'm not sure what the I'll listen to the I'll, I'll listen to the member's point of order to clearly state it. That means state what the point of order is. Don't just say what you want to say. So it's relevance, Mr Speaker. <laughs> the question was about truth telling. It was about truth telling. Truth telling. Yes. Question, yeah, the question was about that, but it was also, will he honour his promise to deliver treaty and truth-telling? So if the Prime Minister is mentioning the word treaty, and that is in the question, he really couldn't be any more relevant. So I'll just listen to the Prime Minister's answer. At this stage, is being directly relevant, and that's not a point of order. Speaker. I gave uh, this question was asked uh, last year on a number of occasions. I indicated the Commonwealth certainly is not in any negotiations on treaty, uh, and indeed, treaty Order. implies two sides negotiating and coming to an agreement. That's what occurs. Various state governments are undertaking uh, that work. I note. Uh, that uh, the Liberal Party in various states has changed its position uh, in some states, but in New South Wales, I think that process uh, is the continuing, but it's occurring at the state has level. Concluded. The call to the honourable member for Newcastle. Thank you, Speaker. And my question is to the Minister for Health. How will health workers and their patients benefit from the government's tax cuts? How do Labor's tax cuts complement other actions the government has taken to make health care more affordable? And why is the government so determined to strengthen Medicare? Yeah. Call to the Minister for Health and Aged Care. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for Newcastle for her question. Uh, Mr Speaker, there are more than 650,000 health workers in Australia, nurses, doctors, allied health workers and more. And they work hard every single day keeping us healthy. And during the worst times in the pandemic, they worked hard to keep us safe, often at great personal risk to themselves. And for that, they deserve our deep gratitude, but they deserve so much more as well, Mr Speaker. Our government wants Australia's hard-working health workers to earn more for what they do. And we want them to keep more of what they earn. That's why on the 1st of July, Labor will deliver every single health worker in Australia a tax cut to help with the cost of living, not just to some of them, but to every single one of the 650,000 health workers. A typical nurse, Mr. Speaker, earning $76,000 a year will receive a tax cut of $1,579, around double what they would have earned from the old plan of five years ago. And Mr Speaker, every single one of their patients will receive a tax cut as well, not just some of them, every single one of them, reinforcing our determination to build on the measures we rolled out over the course of last year to help middle Australia with the cost of living. Last year, Mr Speaker, general patients saved $240 million in medicine costs thanks to the biggest cut to the price of medicines in the 75-year history of the PBS, delivered by this government on 1 January last year. Mr Speaker, they will save pretty much the same amount again this year just from that one single measure. And in four weeks' time, 100 more medicines will be added to the 60-day script list, saving Australian patients even more money at the pharmacist, as well as saving time and much more convenience. And our record investment, Mr Speaker, from last year's budget delivered by the Treasurer in bulk billing for GP visits is again already having an impact too. Mr Speaker, everyone in this parliament knows that bulk billing rates were in free fall when we were elected to government. No surprise, perhaps, after a decade of cuts and neglect to Medicare kicked off by the Leader of the Opposition when he was Health Minister. Our first job was to stop the slide. And since the announcement made by the Treasurer in May, we have seen the free fall in bulk billing for GP visits start to arrest. And Mr Speaker, I'm pleased to report that in just the first two months of the incentive taking effect, 
we've already seen a turnaround in bulk billing for GP visits. With 360,000 additional free visits to the doctor in just the first two months, the last majority, I'm pleased, to large majority in regional Australia. That's what we're about, helping with the cost of living, a stronger Order. economy and a stronger Medicare. This is time that's concluded. Give the call to the Leader of the Nationals. Thank you, Mr yeah. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. Minister, multinational developers are being allowed to ride roughshod <coughs> over communities under the government's reckless race to 82 per cent renewables by 2030. The government's own review found 92 per cent of people affected are dissatisfied with their treatment. Will the minister finally listen to the concerns of communities and establish a proper community consultation assessment process that protects regional communities against renewable projects? The call to the Minister for Climate Change and Energy. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, the honourable member refers to the dire review of community engagement which we commissioned for better community engagement about renewable energy in regional Australia, which we commissioned. After nine years of inaction by those opposite, we came in and said community engagement in regional Australia should be improved. And we, I commissioned Andrew Dyer to write the report. Last Friday at Grab and Gullen, I released the report uh, with representatives of the National Farmers Federation and Farmers for Climate Action. Uh, the Chief Executive Order. of the National Farmers Federation at the press conference where we released the report said this, is a, this report is a great thing. He said this report is a great thing because, Mr Speaker, we on this side of the House, we on Order. this side of the House want to see regional Australians benefit from renewable energy. We want to see re regional Australians benefit from renewable energy. We want to see renewable energy in the best interest of all Australians. What we won't be doing, Mr. Speaker, what we won't be doing is pausing or having a moratorium the as the Deputy Leader or Minister the Leader of the National Party has asked for. Because the last decade was paused enough. The last decade was paused enough, Mr. Speaker. We saw another example of that last night on the television, Mr. Speaker. Order. Now, I'm not, I'm not normally one for horror movies, but last night's viewing was pretty compelling. And we saw, we saw last night the National Energy Guarantee. Remember that one of their 22 energy policies. The same people who killed that are still here, are still here, sitting in the opposition. Now we, we, Mr. Speaker, on this side of the house, recognise, recognise that renewable energy. The minister energy will pause. It's far too much noise. The Leader of the Nationals on a point of order. On relevance, Mr Speaker, the question asked the Minister quite clearly and calmly whether he would put in place a proper consultation assessment process to protect regional communities. Uh, he didn't get to any of that. He's d he had a report, but he's not acting on it. That's order, the problem we've got out the see. front, champ. I don't need the extra commentary at the end of points of order. Just going to ask everyone to take the temperature down, including the minister. He has the call. I released a report. I announced we had accepted all nine recommendations in principle, and we will now work with states and territories and local government and communities to implement those recommendations, Mr. Speaker. Order. We also released, on coming to office, uh, new guidelines for better community engagement. I asked the Australian Energy Market Commission to improve the rulemaking for better consultation with regional committees. These are the things we have done which they didn't do. I mean, I concede the Leader of the National Party has been on a bit of a journey. Order, when he was in government, Mr Speaker, the Leader of the National Party said, renewable energy, I think it's a good thing. And then, and then in June last year he said, we think there's a place for renewables on our rooftops and wind towers, but it should be offshore, not near the Great Barrier Reef. He, he has supported offshore renewable energy, providing it's not near the Great Barrier Reef, which none of our offshore wind zones are, Mr. Speaker. None of our offshore wind zones are near the Great Barrier Reef. And then in August, he called renewable energy a virus. A virus, Mr. Oh, Speaker. He called it a virus. And now he's saying solar oh, wow. should be the only source of renewable energy, Mr. Speaker. He's been on quite a journey, has, has the leader of the National Party. Consistency is not his, not his strong point. Nor is delivering Order, better outcomes for regional Australia, which we are committed to do. The House comes to order. I'll hear from the member for Higgins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister representing the Minister for Women. How are the Albanese Labor government's tax cuts better for Australian women? 
The call to the minister <laughs> representing the minister. Uh, can I thank very much the member for Higgins for her question? Because, of course, on the 1st of July we will deliver a tax cut for every Australian taxpayer to help with cost of living. And that includes every single taxpayer in the member for Higgins electorate. Our plan will see Australian women taxpayers on average receive a tax cut of $1,649 from the 1st of July. These tax cuts are good for Order. Australian the women. Barker is warned. And it will see a bigger tax cut, a bigger tax cut for 90% 90 per cent of Australian women taxpayers who will receive an additional average tax cut of $707. That is 5.8 million women receiving a bigger tax cut. That equates to a boost of 630 100,000 additional hours per week worked by women. Now we know that women work hard across our economy, and we want to ensure that they keep more of their hard-earned money to meet the daily challenges and cost of living pressures that they face. These, challenges are deliberately, these changes are deliberately designed to ensure that those middle, in middle Australia get to keep more of the money that they earn without, of course, adding to inflationary pressures. Women's equality, economic equality, is a core priority for this government. The Leader of the Opposition, frankly, and the Liberals and Nationals have made it clear that they really do not want these tax cuts for middle Australia. It's almost, when you look at their faces today, it's almost like they've been sucking on a lemon. When asked if the Opposition, of course, when asked if the opposition, of course, would roll back Labor's tax cuts, we saw the Deputy Leader of the Opposition saying, well, of course, that's Order. our position. That is Order. absolutely our position. What have you got against 90 per cent of Australian women taxpayers getting a bigger tax cut? What is wrong with that? But we want to Order. make sure Australian women have every opportunity, every opportunity to earn money and to keep more of that money. We know that on this side of the House we have been absolutely focused on women's equality, making sure that we deliver for the women of this nation. We're working to close the gender pay gap Order, and close those Paul earning Fisher. gaps for women in this country, something that those opposite absolutely failed to address. We will always work hard for women, and soon the Minister for Women will release a national gender equality strategy to, gu to guide these continued efforts. <laughs> Give the call to the honourable member for Indi. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Today, the government introduced the tax cuts bill. Many in my Order. regional electorate of Indi will benefit from that, but there are 25,000 people who have incomes below the tax-free threshold, and these tax cuts won't put more money back in their pockets. There are also 20,000 people on the age pension and thousands more on other payments like JobSeeker who are struggling with fixed incomes. What new action will you now take to address cost of living pressures for these people? The call to the Prime Minister. I thank the member for Indi for her question. <laughs> and, uh, we had a meeting earlier today and talked about the uh, tax cuts that were introduced uh, right. by the Treasurer at 12 o'clock. Indeed, the people of regional Australia will in particular benefit uh, from the Labor's tax cuts that we have for, to deal with cost of living in, in Indi, some 87 per cent of taxpayers will get even more, but 100 per cent of taxpayers will get a tax cut. Now, one of the things about uh, the Treasury analysis that we released uh, spoke about bracket creep, and particularly for those people on low incomes. So for people uh, cutting the tax rate from 19 to 16 per cent. According to the Treasury, they said this in the documentation that we released. By reducing the first tax rate from 19 to 16 per cent, the redesign produces a smaller increase in average tax rates for the first seven income deciles over the next 10 years. In other words, it reduces bracket creep even more for these groups Order. compared with Member for stage Kuhn. three and a no change scenario. The order. The, the, the member, no, no, no. The Prime Minister will pause. The member for Hume. This is not a free for all. You just, you just can't keep interrupting, even when I say cease interrupting. So you leave the chamber under 94A.
You've had a pretty good go. Prime Minister has the call and will be heard Thanks. in silence. Thanks, Mr Speaker. Disappointingly, I'm sure he was going to ask a question about our tax package next, <laughs> Mr Speaker. I'm, I, I'm, sure it was, I'm sure it was going to come. But what we have been trying to address is the cost of living pressures, including on the people that the member for Indi raises. Uh, they were particularly beneficiaries of our rental increase, the largest increase in some 30 years. Uh, they benefited from the increase in JobSeeker and other payments that we introduced as part of our last budget. They benefited certainly from the cheaper medicines policy, where Australians benefited to the tune of $250 million last year, and that, of course, was disproportionately towards low income earners and particularly older Australians who are on those regular uh, pharmaceuticals, whether it be for heart treatment or diabetes or other treatments as well. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the government will continue to consider, as we have said in the lead up to uh, the May budget, what further uh, measures we can put in place. Uh, the parenting payment uh, difference, of course, benefited 57,000 uh, largely single mums as a result of the changes we put in place. We will continue to examine uh, what we can do, but these tax cuts are particularly aimed at middle Australia. Mm -hmm. We make no apologies Order. for that, Prime aimed Minister's at middle Australia to provide them with the relief. Call to the member for Wills. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Education. How will the Albanese Labor government's tax cuts benefit workers in the education system? We call to the Minister for Education. Uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank my friend, the legendary member for Wills, for his question. <laughs> you like that? You like Order. that? You're not too bad either. <laughs> In the member for Wills electorate, 78,000 taxpayers will get a tax cut on the 1st of July, and that includes childcare workers. A childcare worker on, say, $40,000 a year will get a $654 tax cut. Under the Liberal Party, they would have got zero. $654 Order, tax room. cut. A maintenance worker at the local primary school on $50,000 will get a tax cut of $929 a year. An admin worker at the local high school doing a job like my mum did for 30 years on 70 grand will get a tax cut of $1,429 a year. And a teacher, and I hope we all agree there's Order. no more important job in this place than a teacher, a teacher on $80,000 a year will get a tax cut of $1,679 a year, double what they would have got under those opposite. And they're just some of the 13 million Australians who will get a tax cut on the 1st of July every taxpayer getting a tax cut. Now, what does it mean for childcare workers or teachers? Well, Mr Speaker, let me give you an example. A high school teacher in Sydney said these tax changes mean I'll see more of what I work hard to earn in my bank account. As someone in their 20s, I'll probably put that towards a house deposit. A childcare worker in Perth said I'm looking forward to approximately 800 bucks this year which will help me with car insurance as well as school books and everything. It's a big improvement. For the average Aussie worker, it means a tax cut of about 21 grand over the next decade. Now, that's real money. That's real help. And today we've got the opposition leader saying that it would be better if we didn't make these changes. Now, understand what that means. That means the opposition are saying it would be better if childcare workers didn't get a bigger tax cut that it would be better if teachers didn't get a bigger tax cut, that if a childcare worker on 40 grand a year under their Order. model shouldn't get a tax cut at all. And these are the people who care for our kids, who teach our kids, who are teaching the next generation of Aussies, and they're saying it would be better if they didn't get a bigger tax cut. It tells you everything you need to know about the modern Liberal Party. 
They don't think that people on low incomes should get an extra buck an hour. They don't think childcare workers should get a bigger tax cut. They don't think teachers should get a bigger tax cut. Order. They don't think 11 million Australians Minister's deserve a bigger tax cut. Thanks, concluded. Call to the Prime Minister. Thanks, Mr Speaker. Given there are no more questions, I ask that further questions be placed on the notice paper.